Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the True Church of Jesus Christ with his Latter-day Saint. Praising the Lord and those that just keep filling her up, packing her in there on a daily basis. <laughs> this episode is inspired by an old friend of mine who all of a sudden asked me questions about stuff. <laughs> and uh, being a good, you know, uh, pre I guess preacher of God, an ambassador of God, I gave him a lot of scriptures. This wise guy asked me, He's like, well, where was God while Eve was eating this apple? <laughs> That's a very good question, and I gave him a lot of scriptures. And uh, the penitence of Adam has that answer. It's a very good question, actually. It's a clever question. So that's kind of the questions that God wants people to ask. And if people can't answer those questions themselves, it's going to take a lot of study. And that's what I did. I read a lot of scripture. So we'll praise the Lord uh, first. And then we'll get into actually uh, the question. I, I I didn't I answered you know I answered the question on uh, YouTube on the actual community tab there, but I wanted to make a video about that question that he asked uh, Sir Chad Worthy because that was a very inquisitive question. If you know Eve was allowed to eat this apple from Satan, then where was God to stop this from all fall from happening? Yes, indeed, where was God? So praise the Lord. This is Matthew chapter 11. See on what see and God too. If you ask God these questions, God doesn't get angry on his throne like don't, don't ask me those things. <laughs> it's all in scripture. Everything this is what I learned about God. I've asked them I've asked stupider questions and more ridiculous questions. One of the bridge of the gap that I had of why I am so enthusiastic about the oriental and the occidental knowledge is because in the in Acts Somewhere in Acts, I think Acts 6 or Acts 7, it says that the Holy Spirit forbade Paul into going into Asia and preaching the gospel. And I was just, hmm, that's pretty strange, Lord. Why would you do that? Why would you not spread the gospel to Asia? I found that was pretty strange. So that's a very strange question. And I asked that question. I was like, why are you, why? And it led me to the Oriental, the Oriental world. It led me into that world. So if you ask questions, this is also what it says in the Quran. If you're inquisitive about God, he'll lead you to what you want to know. But the easier way is for his devotees or people that are devoted to the Lord, like myself. So you don't have to go around the world when you have these crazy questions. Because I had crazy questions, and the only way you can get those answers is by God's causeless mercy, which is by prayer. That's what God is for. He gives you those answers. But it's by his mercy and grace. That's what God's all about, is his mercy on you in order to enlighten you. That is the goal of humanity, is to go back into the Garden of Eden and get this light that I'm going to explain that was taken away from the human consciousness, you could say. And we have to make our way back to God. In the Colburn Bible, this is it. God placed man in a kingdom of fantasy and illusion, which is known as matter, atoms so how did those atoms get or evil you could say now the origins of evil instead of you know calling evil satan right you could say how did men or darkness come into this world and the navajo tribe i i, I uh, have their teachings on youtube there's a youtube channel with the navajo teachings and they well, they have the answers the, this is so old men have asked those questions where did evil come from and it came from the spiritual worlds. They also have that story of how evil came into this world. And uh, the occult sciences with Rudolf Steiner. That's also how did evil come into this world. That's his whole, whole work. His whole work was how evil came into this world. And it all goes back to... This is the thing now. It all goes back to God's religion. Men have asked these questions. And it doesn't give you any other answer other than it came from this kingdom. It came from, it came from another world. So that's the origins of evil and how men have the contaminated consciousness of good and evil. And they do not know or they indulge in too much in either or. So thank you for that question. I'm going to answer that. Now, on one occasion, Jesus spoke. This is Matthew 11, 25. Father, Lord of heaven and earth, I offer you praise for what you have hidden from the learned and clever you've revealed to the merest children. This doctrine, this Bible, is meant for the, the Gentiles. It's meant for people that are lost. 
God gives his glory for people that this is that, that's what Jesus Christ and his ministry was all about to give them to give the kingdom of God to people to a world that didn't have God before <laughs> that's what the Gentiles means Gentiles is just somebody that has no idea that there's a God and they just live like eating drinking sleeping and getting up and doing whatever that's what a Gentile is and they don't know the gift that's the whole thing they've been given a gift of God of immortality actually if you not just believe in God but believe that Jesus Christ is in the midst of you that is your you are there you're in the image that's the thing with the scriptures I'm going to reveal is because of this heritage and man, man has been disowned fell from grace he, he's been disowned from his heritage but his true nature is God he is in the image and likeness of the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit there is no other reality either that's the basis of mysticism so when people like in the Orient all matter is just an illusion or you're just an imagination of yourself <laughs> I said that is ridiculous knowledge Lao Tzu, I even put that on my uh, community tab there. Is if you don't, if, if the common guy doesn't laugh at the way, as it's called, like the way to immortality, if, the, if you go tell like just the guy out in the street that you're immortal already, he's going to laugh in your face. Oh, but the people like myself that take this very seriously, well, we inquire a lot about that, and we take the way seriously. That's what he said as well. Then the people, the, the not-so-good students that just take a little bit of here and a little bit of there, well, they're not going to achieve Im their immortal, immortal soul. They're not going to achieve the pinnacle of the way. So God explains a lot of the transgression now. So basically, just imagine the trees you see outside. The roots of the tree is basically material existence. We cannot see the roots, right? They're in the darkness, and that is mankind because of this transgression. It all, material existence was all by a transgression. That's one thing as well, too. It's under condemnation and judgment. So time and space, even though, yeah, it's made by atoms, they're all by condemnation and judgment. That's also the thing with... Uh, the Gnostic mythology, it's not just a mythology, what they're saying is the root of the universe was created all in sin. <laughs> but there is a kingdom of God. That's why Jesus Christ in Matthew chapter 6 tells us the mystical way not to take thought for the fleshly form of being, the concoction of the flesh, because that's all been stitched upon us by the Lord God, or what you can say is the demiurge. So the body that we have, the mind that we have, and the soul that we have, it's all created under evil. <laughs> that's what Lao Tzu and the rulers, that's what he said. He knows the doctrine. Why? Because this fall of grace happened, and man fell away from his image and likeness, his true nature. And this evil force, as the Navajo tribe has uh, detailed a lot, took him away from God's image and likeness and it's been a war to get back or to actually have faith in this not necessarily mythology because you can't see these facts out in the world they only exist within your consciousness so that's what having faith means and understanding uh, like basically like people's words can you tell if people are telling the truth about consciousness about life because that's what Jesus Christ is. He's the way, the truth, the truth about life. And uh, he gives life, life eternal. See, people don't even know that those things are real. So how could you tell someone that? Uh, and when it, when it just might, like Lao Tzu says, when it's just laughed at and joked about, especially the way of what, immortality? Yeah, people are looking for the way to sense gratification. That's also what Bhagavad Gita teaches, because people are in the roots of the tree and the false ego. All they are after is just matter, <laughs> different forms and effects, and how it interacts with their minds and bodies. But the evil which you have asked me has already been planted in the world, you see. But the time for its harvesting has not arrived yet. So this is what our age is all about. The year 2023 is the harvesting of this age. 
of all of this evil that man has been up to, indulging in actually, because he has a choice to walk the way with God or to basically die under the law of matter and death. That's also the penalty when man fell. He fell, he's in the roots of the tree, and just death exists. That's, that's the doctrine of the Orientals, your imagination of yourself. But if you believe in that imagination of yourself, it's all rooted in death. That's what the Buddha gave to the world. That inside the human mind, it's just death and suffering. <laughs> that's it. And if you do not follow the way, you die. That's Miyamoto Musashi. So those guys knew life and death. Oh, jeez, princess, not right now. Not right now. Harvesting evil. I'm trying to harvest phone calls, princess. No, please. Well, the evil, see, that we're being removed out of this age has been planted a long time ago. But great men have known this and this is the way out of that human consciousness into transcendental consciousness. You have to understand that there's a difference. There's a difference between mortal, so that's what Brother Paul says, the mortal consciousness and the immortal, the transcendental. But you have to follow the way. So that's Matthew chapter 6. If you follow the way, you will be led to the, the immortal soul, not yours. It doesn't belong to anybody but Jesus Christ because of the crucifixion. See, that's what the book of Hermas revealed as well. That's why when Jesus Christ says, all that the Father has is mine, <laughs> that is like everything that creation that God made now belongs to the word Jesus Christ because he came down and did what he promised to Adam in the beginning. That's what the scriptures were about in the penitence of Adam and the books one and two of Adam and Eve. As soon as Adam fell from grace, the word of God came upon Adam in this wretched world. In this world of matter, illusion, he had, Adam had to, he lost his spiritual countenance. He, see, he lost the light that we are supposed to gain, the light that enlightens all men. That is covered up under matter. And God's scriptures tells us how the light I am was covered up under matter it's because of man's disobedience see there's multiple mysteries God has revealed because of Jesus Christ and the Epistle Sophia I'll keep it strictly just to one mystery and that's the fact that let's just say the father uh, uh, okay I'll get into the scriptures of how Adam or and Eve ate the apple but this is the time now of how that evil is being harvested and the Beginning, one grain of evil seed that came with death that's in the minds of men was sown in the heart of Adam. And it's already caused so much wickedness. That's what the judgment day is all about. So the big crop, that's Matthew chapter 13, verse 38. But we'll get into Adam's fall and losing his spiritual countenance. So this is the forgotten books of Adam and Eve, chapter 71. Since when I ate the tree... Or the fruit of the tree he drove me out of the garden into a strange land into this material world and this material world is darkness just the roots of the tree and deprived me of my bright nature that is why we follow the way to regain our bright nature so that's the thing because Adam and Eve ate off the tree it brought them into this world and that's more now uh, Ezra uh, chapter 7 book 2 of Ezra see I need two Bibles because this Bible is called the the good news <laughs> and this is just your regular Catholic Bible that does not have that apocry uh, apocryphia does not have book 2 of Ezra so that's why I needed multiple Bibles in order to understand all of God's work because it is, that's just how man is he's a corrupt fornicator and in this day and age he's just messing around with boys toys and artificial intelligence he'd rather <laughs> fornicate around <laughs> with artificial intelligence than real girls man. or see this is uh, how the spiritual kingdoms there's two worlds so book 2 Ezra chapter 7 
Take, for example, the city. It's all full of good things. See, this is the kingdom of God he's talking about, so it's an analogy. But the entrance is narrow and steep. Fire on one side and deep water on the other. So that's Matthew 7, verse 13. How the kingdom of God is straight and narrow. But you have to walk the way in order to possess this inheritance with God. So this is uh, verse 10, or sorry, verse 11. I made this world for their sake, but when Adam broke the commandments, the world came under my judgment. The entrances into this world were made narrow and difficult to travel. So that's what the book of Hermas reveals, is that man's in the belly of the beast, he's in darkness, and there's all just fighting, war, bloodshed, difficulties, rough, dangerous. But the entrances into this new kingdom, into God's prophecy, that's the prophecy of Daniel, when the uh, kingdoms of man were going to get destroyed, and the new kingdom will come. See, the entrances to the great world are to come and are wide and safe and lead to immortality. But everyone must, see, everyone like myself, this is what God gave me, must walk the narrow and meaningless ways of this world. And no one has more of a meaningless life than me. I can attest to that. But God gave me the riches of his spiritual kingdom. But you have to walk these ways in order to receive God's blessing. And that blessing is our lost, bright, spiritual countenance, which is known as enlightenment. So he will, <laughs> and that's the thing too, brought into this world, we have to come back into God. So then Adam wept, saying, O oh God, when we dwelt in the garden, our hearts were lifted up. We saw the angels and sang praises in heaven. But now we do not see as we used to. And when we entered the cave, all creation became hidden from us. So the cave of material darkness, all of a sudden God's kingdom, the invisible, became hidden. They could not see it anymore. So that's why men, it even explains that in the Colburn Bible, how men lost their spiritual vision to God's kingdom because man fell into this world. He had his own choice, good and evil, and he started doing more evil and that cut him off of God's kingdom because of his choice. The Colburn Bible uh, gets into that in great detail uh, in the story of Dadam and Lewis, or Lewin, sorry. And that's just how they were subject to disease. And they tried to go back up to the Garden of Eden, and the spirit beings cut them off and said, you're defiled. And God in this kingdom will not accept defilement, will not accept evil. Uh, that's why man now has to be reborn, as Jesus Christ says, in order to enter, enter the kingdom of God. He must be reborn in the spirit. So that's why things have become hidden, and you have to be reborn in order to, you could say, see second sight into the kingdom of God. See, but when God was, was uh, when Adam was subject under God, uh, you had a bright nature. And you could, by reason, see all of these things, all the spiritual kingdoms and all the spiritual nature. But after your transgression, your bright nature was withdrawn, was taken away from you. It was not left for you to see these things anymore, but only near, only the flesh. So only matter, and matter is brutish, as God says here. The flesh is just like, well, it's like an animal, basically. The beast. That's why God calls it in the Col Colburn Bible more of the beast. Uh, that's like you could say right in the beginnings. He clothed man in the beast. And earth is also in this matter of beast. Uh, so that's you could say when the dragon was caused to get kicked out as well. It surrounded the earth. And that's why in the book of Hermas it says... Oh man, you're in darkness. You're in this beast. Not only in nature, but also in the body. And we have to uh, navigate around the beast. Which one are you going to feed? So that's the native proverb. Are you going to feed this evil within you? Or are you going to feed this spiritual nature within you? And that was a simple uh, thing to guide man, was these proverbs or these little verses of wisdom. And, but it actually came from uh, the heritage of God. So I'll try to find now how now you can say, where was God? <laughs> where was God when this happened?
right? So here's the penitence of Adam. Satan cried and said to Adam, All of my arrogance and sorrow came to pass because of you. For because of you I went forth from my dwelling, and because of you I was alienated from the throne of the cherubs, who by spreading out a shelter used to enclose me. Because of you my feet have trod in the earth. Adam replied and said to him, What are our sins against you? What, like, what did we do to you? Satan replied and said, Oh, you did nothing to me, but I came to this measure because of you. So say, this being, right? I tried to explain in other videos, God gave Lucifer or Satan a task to guide humanity from the visible into the invisible. But this Satan, I guess, had free will against God and did not want to guide Adam or the father of mankind into the spiritual kingdom. This Satan wanted to guide man into his own kingdom. So that's where this war in heaven, you could say, started. Because Satan wanted his own throne or his own kingdom or his own rulership. He didn't want to guide humanity into basically the light so that's when the separation of light and dark came. So when God breathed his spirit onto you, you received the likeness of his image. Now this is what Satan told Adam. <laughs> when God made you, you received his image and likeness. <laughs> Whereupon Michael came and made you bow down before God. So that's what this whole rebellion was about. Because Satan... This is where pride and egotism, you can say vanity, within the consciousness of the fallen man. How they're jealous of one another. Because Satan, I guess, or, or Lucifer, looked at Adam and he was in the image and likeness of God. And no one was in the image and likeness of God. So that's why they had to worship Adam, because Adam is in the image and likeness of God. It's not because Adam had his own image. It's because when... God presented Adam. That's basically God. <laughs> and say, and this Lucifer did not like that. He didn't want to bow down. So that's the whole idea here. Michael summoned all of his angels and God said, come, bow down. He didn't want to. Michael bowed first and then he called me. He said, you too bow down to Adam. And I said, go away, Michael. I shall not bow down to him who is posterior to me. For I am the former. So he thinks he's better. Anyways. Why is it proper for me to bow down to him? The other angels too who were with me heard this. And my words seemed pleasing to them. And they did not prostrate themselves to you Adam. Therefore God became angry with me. And commanded to expel us from our dwelling. And cast me and my angels who were in agreement with me. Into this darkness. Into earth. And you were at the same time in the garden. When I realized that because of you, I had gone forth from this dwelling of light. See, this light countenance, that's basically the robbery of man. Man has been robbed from the light that enlightens all men. And only Jesus Christ now is the link between, you could say, the kingdom of God and this world. The light dwelling. And now he's just here trapped in matter. Sorrows and pains. Fear. So that's the Oriental Revelation as well, the Occidental Revelations. Then I prepared a trap for you so that I might alienate you from your happiness. Matter. So basically how uh, the life of man is, is in distraction, confusion, chaos, alienation now from the light. He's been distracted from the Holy Spirit and his, his worship of God. So when Adam heard this, he said, Lord, Lord, my soul's in your hand. Make this enemy of mine distant from me who desires to lead me astray, who I'm searching for the light that I've lost. So that's why man is always looking for something. Even the basic individual has to go out and look for something in time and space because that's just how consciousness works. <laughs> that's, it doesn't matter if you're a five-year-old girl. You've got to look for a lollipop. You've got to look for your little Barbie dolls. You've got to look for something to distract you away this world always puts people's attention away. See, that's the thing. They have lost. You have to come within. That's the way now of following Matthew chapter 6. Take no thought for this world. 
but seek the kingdom of God within. So now where was Eve, right? So now why did God just allow Eve to eat this apple if God wasn't there? So here's the story. <laughs> Adam said to him, when God made us, me and your mother, he gave us commandment not to eat of that tree. Satan deceived us at the hour when the angels who were guardians of the tree ascended to worship God. <clears throat> then Satan caused Eve to eat the fruit. So what happened was, let's just say at 12 o'clock, everyone went to go worship God. <laughs> so now God is the all-knowing. He doesn't just let things happen. Because now, just like everyone else, they have the knowledge of who to obey. See, she. this is where they didn't use their own mind. So this is how oh, Satan caused Eve to eat the fruit. In the real story, you know, Satan, the snake, did not use a gun. He didn't use, he just used deceit, trickery. So that's the thing. When man is presented, this is why it's a correlation to man's consciousness being in darkness. He's only presented with thoughts in his head, whether to choke a baby or smash a, a, a or throw someone off a bridge or shoot someone in the face. All of that originates within his own consciousness. That's also the secret of evil as well, is you don't have to entertain that. That's the, temp that's the temptation. And as you see, it's not a physical temptation. But it appears to man because matter, if people think matter or circumstances, people are real inside their own minds, that's what makes delusions come true. That's why man is in a fallen state. And this is the origin of how man has been suckered to eating, you could say, or doing evil thoughts. So it says, Eve caused me who did not know to eat this uh, fruit. For my son Seth, God divided the garden between me and your mother Eve that we might watch it. So just like a responsible parent, right? When God is like okay here is something for you to watch over and he just commands you to watch over see God is trusting my friend asked where's God at this time well since God is trusting in the all-knowing he knows that there's gonna be this that's why when God uh, when this happened God said I knew you would transgress these commandments and that's the whole thing God knew this was gonna happen but just like little children, right? When you put your little children in the room and there's a video game there, but you tell them, oh, don't play that game for 10 minutes. Just chill in the room for a little bit. And then you go away and close the door. Well, the little children are going to try to, they're, they're going to do whatever they're going to do. They're not going to trust in the parent. That's the problem. So that's also the thing here. Eve was given a task to watch the garden and to obey God's commandments. And it's under free will as well. So as you can see, God wasn't around at that time, but the garden is omniscience of God. Nothing takes place that out of God's knowing outside of this. And it's not, here's what also thing to a misconception about this garden. It's not like a pleasure cruise. That's also things that people don't understand about God. And I didn't understand about God till recently is God's not just sitting on a throne having grovelers worship him he's always working just like the human being works like he says in the colburn bible god's not a god of idleness he doesn't just do nothing himself that's why you can't just idle your way into heaven either or just pretend that you're saved god gives us a task and he gave eve a task and that's the thing which is failing the task it's it's like your job Right When your boss comes to you and, and trusts, that's the thing with God and faith. That's what the human being, that's what God is trying to teach us with trust and faith in Him. Is by trusting and faith in Him when others don't, that's why the boss gives others the promotion or the raise. But if the boss keeps going to the dummy that's like, okay, can you do this? And the guy can't, then he can't get that promotion, which is quote unquote enlightenment. God gives a task it's just Eve failed the task. 
and that caused a ripple between men and women and women have been blamed for that thing as well but that's not the entire truth either because Eve is while there's a mystery behind Eve the true woman is actually spiritual as it says in the Colburn Bible from the void and it does explain how remember this Eve was created not from the void but from Adam's rib so <laughs> there's a mystery behind the the woman her nature and disobedience not to man but to God and how women get seduced away from the, well, or just are quick to seduction anyways in their nature so women have been you could say blasphemed by man because of this legend but it hasn't been properly explained the true woman the divine source as you could say is the Holy Spirit and men have always see that's the thing with God he made male and female whole but we have to get back to this divine light in order to have this divine love or else that's what this other Eve is she's just under condemnation so if a woman is not enlightened herself the females in time and space are all under this original condemnation <laughs> and and as you can see the women in the world they have a very bad reputation <laughs> why because they're not of the divine nature so that's also what it teaches in the Colburn Bible the women themselves have to lift up themselves also just like the men into divine consciousness in order to uh, that's what being under the law is in order to break this spell of human consciousness of death disease and darkness and being under the law of condemnation that's what now being under the grace of God means is not you're not under this original sin or condemnation of the flesh anymore that's why it's important to get back into you know you could say the way or into knowledge of your spiritual heritage or else you won't know why sin is imp uh, relevant or how to absolve sin or you might just think too like any old girl is good that's not the truth either <laughs> that's the th or just any guy it doesn't matter who they are everyone is in time and space and everyone is a hunk of matter and they're all under condemnation that's what brother Paul they're all under sin all under this original sin their consciousness has to make connection to God in order to absolve them from sin but this is where it all came from it all came from that God gave them a task and just like a good store owner the store owner goes away a little bit and he expects the employee to do the job so verse 33 we had 12 angels who went around with each of us because of the guarding of the guardian guarding of the garden sorry until the time of the light since every day they would go forth to worship the Lord at the time when they went to the heavens at that time see when they all went to worship but let's say at, at our jobs right it's lunchtime everyone goes to lunchtime but one guy <laughs> why does that one guy stick around well maybe he likes to be uh, he likes to do his job you know he, he keeps his eyes open he he, he does the little things he sticks around while other people go off to eat so that's another thing too of how things could just happen and it did happen that way while everyone was called out to worship God Eve was not called she was called to just watch this part of the garden and that's when now it, here's the thing with this is what it teaches in the Pista Sophia Satan had to disguise himself as a snake my friend asked him well how did Satan now crawl into the garden and he didn't do it exactly he used deceit and trickery and he hypnotized a snake <laughs> or it, I think it says in the in the books one and two of Adam and Eve he made an agreement with the snake the snake agreed Satan asked the snake can if I do this for me go over to Eve and ask her to eat this apple <laughs> or let me I think this is how it was let me mind control you basically so let me I'm gonna control your mind and I'm gonna 
be you in the garden. So that's how it was too. He didn't just walk in there. It was <laughs> it was all by deceit and he went in by the snake. That's also what it teaches with snakes too is that the snakes got punished. The snakes used to have hands, feet, and they were not like what we see now in time and space just you know long ropes slithering around on their bellies. God punished the snake for this as well because the snake agreed with Satan into like this coercion with Eve. So my friend asked like again like how did this happen, right? How did God let Satan walk into the garden? Well, first it wasn't like that. You got to remember the snake. That's the that's the very important thing here. It was deception by that snake and also it was an appo appointed time. So she was given like a a part of the grocery store. She was given like the meat section to, to just watch. Everyone had to go out lunch break. And then here comes the snake. Oh, can I have a little bit of meat here? Or why don't you go try that meat over there? It tastes really good today. It's supposed to be the special. And that's the thing too. As a good shopkeep, you're not allowed to taste the meat, right? It's just that simple as well. Like, sorry, not as a shopkeep, but as just a, an employee. You're not allowed as an employee to go taste the meat. It doesn't matter if someone's asking you to go do that and that is exactly how Eve got seduced by the snake or Satan it was all just by suggestion y'all he didn't see this person right let's just imagine we're at the grocery store and everyone went out to lunch right the, the owner of the store is like all right guys lunch time <laughs> but I stay there okay I'm Eve I stay in the meat section the Lord's like, not you, pal. You stay over there while all of us are going out for lunch. Okay, fine. But then out here comes another customer. And the other customer's now like, oh, that meat over there. It's like $9.99 a pound, right? It's on sale. Usually it's like, you know, $50.99 a pound. It's so expensive. But today it's on sale. Why don't you try stuff? For free? Let's just go ahead and just try it. No one's around. No one's around. <laughs> just like that. And what am I going to do? See, the old me, you know, when I was working at the uh, other, you know, when I was d degraded in consciousness, that was my temptation. And my friend knows that very well in my experience. He knows that in a long time ago, 20 years ago, what went down in the in the Vigi game store. And I surcame the temptation just the same way. So that's the thing, too. It's every, you know, like, <laughs> that's just a lesson. What happened to me happened to Eve. And God is always the all-knowing within us. God is our individual consciousness. But how did I fall into temptation? How did I commit that act 20 years ago down at Microplay, Mr. Chadworthy? And this is what God teaches. <laughs> it's not me doing this. See, that's also the thing with transcendental consciousness. This is what the human conditioning went through. Condemnation, suffering. It's all an illusion. What happened to me 20 years ago, now is all an illusion. It's not the truth. Why? Because I was in matter. And matter is just dream substance. And when you're under dream substance, you're under condemnation, buddy. And in time and space, it's not you doing these actions. Oh sure, Scamwise was fat and he was working at Microplay, but he was ready for condemnation. Why? It's just how it is in time and space, brother. Not because of me. It's just because I'm enclosed in matter. I did not know my spiritual origins. And that's what drove me into the wilderness. So what happened to me after Mr. Chadworthy? Well, <laughs> disappeared into the wilderness. That's exactly the, at least this is what I had to go through to make people understand that the human consciousness, mortality, is all an illusion. And it's all been played out, you could say, in the beginning. That's the oriental knowledge. That everything that happens in the mind of mortality does not exist. It's all in the roots of the tree. And we have to make our way back to God with this light countenance that we lost. And it's just as simple as that. And I'm just going to kind of stop the video there because that's just all, that was it, you know. How did how did Satan do all this trickery? Well, how did how did that happen to everyone else in life? 
how if God is with us, right? You could ask that question twenty years ago when I was working at this game store and God was with me. How did I walk around in condemnation? Oh, that's because I didn't know the first fall of grace, you see. I didn't, I wasn't we weren't taught these things in life that we were already in condemnation, in matter, and our consciousness has fallen away from God. <laughs> that's why all these things happened to me. And I can explain now why everything happened to me very clearly, perfectly, and prophetically. <laughs> so that's the thing. I, I wanted to thank my friend as well too for asking those questions because it brought out uh, you know, a story of my life as well and the scriptures. If you're sticking around at the 40 minute mark, thank you very much because it takes a little time to explain transcendental consciousness. Remember, the idea was the fact that Man fell from grace. He's already under condemnation. I was thinking about the flesh. Video games were cool. I was fat. And that was it. <laughs> See, like two things. That's why man's limited. I, two things. So that's the whole idea here about man's fall from grace. And because of that, it's, you know, that's, that's why. It's, it's not what you can do in time and space. What good actions. Was I wasn't going to help people for the rest of my life to stop this you know condemnation that I had now you know feeling bad about yourself doing these things hurting other people the relationships that we you know that we had at that at that time as well too especially with the owner of the place oh man the owner of the place we had a good old time with the owner of the place until you know sinning happened and that's all it is when you're in matter when you don't know the truth you just walk around and sin and look at me I am just some guy and to my friends see they know me and they're like how, how could I sin oh very easily by not knowing the truth that's all it that's all it takes if you do not know the truth you're walking around pretending you're a fat teenager you love video games and you get a job at the video game store and the rest is history why because there's no God activity going on inside that time and space 20 years ago <laughs> <laughs> oh man, 20 years ago it was just games, games, games. Wayne Gretzky's 3D hockey and who uh, Street Fighter, what else? What else? Nothing. See, that's man, he has nothing. He's in the belly of the beast and he's always just going to sin if you don't put your attention into God. If that's what also coming out of the law is is acknowledging that God is in the midst of you and practicing the way that matter is an illusion. You're just an imagination of yourself and there's only one consciousness. And that consciousness, the word of God came down as Jesus Christ to free, not to, not to condemn matter, not to say matter is evil, because that's also uh, Matthew, oh sorry, John chapter 9 with the blind man. That's why he was able to heal, because he didn't say, oh, that guy is under condemnation. You see, he was the Christ, and he says, that guy is me. <laughs> there is no blind. Or that was another thing, too, the blind. Did his mother and father create sin, which is that blind guy? And Jesus said, no, there's nothing they can do that could create that. This is a chance to glorify God. And what that means is, to acknowledge that God is within the midst of you, 2 Corinthians 13, verse 5, and then that's how that miracle takes place, is that acknowledging God is in the midst of you. And there is, well, you have to understand too, what you did and like and what I did and what everybody, whatever happened, happened because you were ignorant. And that's the sin. And that's, you can say, the repentance, paying the price for your sin. What am I gonna repent of? all the garbage that I did 20 years ago and not doing those things. <laughs> That's another thing too. I did a lot of stupid things in time and space because I didn't know nothing. But now I know, and that's the remedy. God is the only remedy and putting your attention into God and not into the world. So that's why God raises up lunatics like myself to tell people that God is real. Not only is he real, but Boy, is he ever real, especially with his uh, judgments and his all his other work. God's got a hundred Bibles. No one reads them. 
But thank you. If anyone has any questions, I am willing to answer everything. And uh, that's also what God raises us up here for. Like, that's what real ministers do. That's why my friend, you know, poor Chadworthy, he can't go to the ministers out there and ask these questions that he has. He'll look at him like he's an idiot. And truly, those are the cleverest questions. How did this happen? Why did this happen? Those questions need to be answered. And they're all in scripture. And they're detailed in mistakes like me. I, I was, how did, how did I succumb to temptations, Mr. Worthy? I'll leave that up to you. <laughs> well, thank you guys for tuning in. And until next time, take care.